In this video, I want to show how to finally run these examples that you can try out these coffee recommendations yourself. There are multiple ways how to run, especially the graph database, the Neo4j instance. And I want to show you multiple ways. And first of all, I would like to run everything locally. I think it's one of the easiest ways to run databases locally by using Docker containers. So what I typically do is something like a Docker run example, where we can start up a Docker instance by just saying something like Docker run my database. I include the script in the uh, GitHub repo and what you can say is something similar to Neo4j in a specific version, please run it. Then also what I do is I would like to publish a port locally so that it's available via local host, set the basic authentication and also that's interesting later on how to uh, get the data. I include some CSV file, um, I'll explain that in a second and then basically I run everything locally here. So that's quite uh, straightforward. I like to use shell script for that uh, purpose. And then I say, well, please start it up. And similarly, simultaneously, while we're waiting, I also start up my Quarkus instance again. And now we see once that is up and running, then actually what we see that this runs locally already. And also that on the browser, localhost 7474, we get this um, Neo4j browser available that I was showing you earlier in these videos. So then when everything is up and running, we can open up this in our browser and see, okay, now we have the database instance here available. So of course, first of all, that's empty. So that's an empty, fresh, new database. And well, we need to get the data somewhere. I included the example with these, well, coffee beans and the flavors and everything that you have seen so far um, with the examples that I uh, grabbed from the website that I showed you in the first video. And basically I created some uh, CSV file with the data that already has been well processed and optimized. So I basically include some name of the coffee beans, the origin, and then the flavors encoded in some format here where all of these values, these are the percentage values, they should add up to 100% or to one. So that is all the data that we use. And what we could now is to either process this further and use this file to then produce some sort of cipher file with the cipher scripts. Or what we can also do, we can use a cipher script file and load the CSV. And first of all, what I want to show you is to load that example from a file. So this works. That is my cipher script that I'm about to execute. So first of all, I want to clear all the data and create um, a user like our single user uh, that uh, later on can rate something. And then I produce all the data as follows that we take the data from the CSV file. Well, where does that come from? That's already interesting because it needs to be provided to the database and loaded in the file system where it's actually accessible, which is why we have to mount it into the running container. We could equally create a Docker image for our database instance that already includes this file provided by the Docker file or mount it accordingly. So the slash import, that's the default path for that where we can load these files into. And then I can use these rows and go over them. So we merge all of the coffee beans, we uh, create the origins and create that structure. If you've been using uh, Cypher before, then you probably know such a structure uh, because it's a little bit more intuitive to say, well, please merge bean that already uh, points the relation with the arrow to, uh, to origin to basically write all of this in one line, but that wouldn't work in the same way why? Because then it tries to merge the structure and in case an origin is already existent, then it would create the origin again because it would merge. If we had this all in one line, it would merge the whole structure. And instead, I would, of course, like to get the, uh, the origin if it already exists or create it and then merge the structure afterwards, which then is the expected result. And the same for the flavors and the tastes and percentages that we just merge and then create accordingly for each and every row in this data file. That already works. We can try this out. So we can say, well, please run this uh, Cypher shell script in the CLI 
and then we'll just provide this into our localhost database with the credentials and please load everything uh, from that cipher script so you can try this out yourself and then what we can do first of all we can see in the browser that now we have some data available we see that this now is populated with well, all of these coffee beans and tastes and origins similar to what I was showing you before and now if my application is already up and running with the Quarkus dev mode that I've, uh, I was using here then we can use this as well and then I can see that my application works here and now we have an empty state where we have no rating yet and the coffee beans as follows so this is already a way to try this out locally and then you have this local example running you can rate some coffee and then see okay what's going on and which predictions and recommendations and user profile I get from here so that is very straightforward to run in case if you want to use docker containers and run it locally in that way that is one example then you have everything locally it depends what is the easiest way to run such things for you so for example if your system if you're not using Linux and uh, you're struggling with how to set up a docker uh, instance for example or you cannot uh, use docker locally or for example you would like to use some data that is shared by other users or that is accessible in some shared or hosted or managed manner that is quite often the case if we access some bigger uh, amount of data that then we need to process or perform some analysis on so for data science purposes then it might make more sense to have a version that is somewhat hosted a managed version a cloud instance etc in a previous video I was explaining how to deploy Neo4j in a Kubernetes cluster so if you have access to that this is also a way how to run it but what I also want to show you is a different uh, way that is provided via uh, Neo4j directly so there is a possibility to use a cloud instance a managed cloud service for Neo4j called Aura and nice thing for developers we can try this out for free so you can create a free instance that already uh, comes in enterprise version so it's it's not just a toy it's actually uh, usable and we can use this and create a database there so this is the second thing that I want to show you that's what I've been using for my favorite coffee so that's of course the name and that is very simple to just well create it and you have an empty database there as well which in the free instance is uh, limited in notes and relationships but for us that's more than enough and we can then use this connection to well connect our application to that's the second example that I would like to show you for that purpose let's have a look in our application how we actually configure the access so I have two ways how these things are configured this is the one that we've seen so far so these are the configuration options uh, with Quarkus for a local instance so for local host which is used in the dev profile so only for the dev mode which is the one that you've already seen so we can use that and then we uh, basically connect to our local instance provided by local host so this works but if we would like to use a cloud instance I could change the configuration or now I say well just please use this for the prod profile if we run our application actually in the, the default uh, prod mode then uh, we configure this differently and um, we can set username and password is down there where you cannot read it and um, this works provided by the URL that is here in the connection URL with one uh, thing that you have to take uh, into consideration because of the Quarkus, uh, um, connect, uh, Quarkus configuration in version 2.1 there is still a um, well bug or some issue where you cannot use the plus s where you actually have to use it uh, without this um, secure uh, URI and then manually tell well this is actually please use the encrypted version and then this works we can try this out I stop now my dev mode and instead I run uh, the java-jar my production uh, Quarkus application so I can uh, try this out uh, there and then let's see locally that should now be the same so this works as well we see that we have our name and rating as expected you see also now the rating disappear because that is just uh, the default example that also has been loaded 
um, by the script. I will show you this again in a second. And then we can rate uh, the coffee here in the same way um, that we had before. So I can give this these uh, positive ratings. And then in the user profile, for example, we also get our re recommendations again. How this works here with this instance is that we can, well, we have multiple ways how to access it. We can, for example, use a browser and then we already have uh, this browser available. We can connect uh, to it here and see a similar example to what we saw in our local browser. So this works in the same way. We can access our data here and these coffee beans and everything in our graph. So that works just as well and we can do the same things here. If I would like to access this from the command line from my self cipher shell, this also works. Um, I can also access the cloud instance here. I have to provide a different address. Um, here I can use this uh, plus s that I've been uh, copying from Aura Free. And I can execute this, but not quite in the same way with one exception. It depends how you would like to load your data. This, of course, does not work in the cloud instance because I would need to, well, provide my file here somewhere. So actually the easiest way is to either provide your cipher script differently where you prepare it up front that you have a cipher script with every line for every, um, for every coffee bean, or you can actually load it from a URL that is publicly hosted. So this is the case for me because my example is on GitHub that I can say, well, please just use the URL, the web-based URL instead of file URL. And then this works that I can execute this. And now this goes against my cloud instance and it will execute the queries in the same way. So now if I do this here, then I can see that now the ratings should be gone again because now I, um, over wrote them in the same way. So I say, well, I would like to uh, please rate the same beans here. And then the rating is there and I can use the same data. So this is how you can run these examples. All of the code is available via GitHub, of course. So uh, where, whether you would like to use the local running example using Docker containers or the Neo4j Aura example by using the cloud provided service or any other way how to get a Neo4j instance and to then connect to it with your Quarkus application. I hope that was helpful and enjoy trying it out yourself.